Uh, good morning. Name's BM2 Pike. Uh, giving you a tour. PC3 USS Hurricane. Back at. Okay, we're on the forecastle right now. Commanding officer right there. That's our Mark 38 Mod 1 25 millimeter chain gun. It's a good place. I painted it myself. Welcome to the channel. I am Commander Tyrrell, and this is USS Cyclone, a coastal patrol craft or PC. It was developed to support general offshore work and to support special forces missions. Commissioned in August of 1993, it was a promising design with a broad range of capabilities. The primary mission of Cyclone was to serve as a platform for conducting maritime special operations including interdiction, escort, non-combatant evacuation, reconnaissance, operational deception, intelligence collection and tactical swimmer operations. Her small size, stealthy construction and high speed were tailored to performing long range insertions and extractions as well as other SOF support duties as needed. To my left is the officer's stateroom. Three racks, max personnel on this boat, uh, 28 people. The mess sex is pretty much the entire crew's common area, recreational area, eating area, meeting area, paperwork area. We have stoves, refrigerators, one cook, one CS on the board. It gets pretty packed here come chow call. 28 guys come running down. This is as good as it gets right here. It's nice uh, during rough seas. You hear the waves, you feel your rack bending. The ship's operational capabilities were designed to meet the unique requirements of the special warfare missions. Cyclone was capable of accelerating from stop to 35 knots in under 3 minutes, then moved from full ahead to 15 knots astern in 60 seconds. In high speed, hard over turns, the ship barely healed as the automatic stabilizers engaged. Cyclone had good speed, maneuverability and a firepower that appeared to be unmatched in this class of ship when it came online. As the lead ship of the Cyclone class, she was used as an important testbed for introduction of other classes. Installed power is a 4 times Paxman Marine diesel engine driving 4 axles under the stern, with 14,500 horsepower and a top speed of 35 knots. Her typical crew consisted of 36 sailors, including 24 enlisted personnel, 4 officers and up to 8 special forces. The sensor capabilities revolved around the then powerful Sperry Vision 2100M integrated combat and navigation system. Weapons include 2 times Mark 38 25mm Bushmaster chain guns. There are pintle mounts for 40mm automatic grenade launchers and a 12.7mm machine guns. At least 6 FIM-92 Stinger portable SAMs were packed and ready for deployment. Have a good day. The outline of the USS Cyclone is dominated by the forward superstructure, with two other structures visible amidships and stern. A series of catwalks connect the three main operating areas. The main gun system is mounted on the bow in the A position and the communication sensor mast is mounted on the main structure. The rear contains an elevated gun system in the Z position as well as a special assault craft. One cool thing about patrol crafts is uh, everybody does a little bit of everything. It doesn't matter your rank or your rate. One man stands in there and monitors everything throughout the entire ship running. As good a design as it is, Cyclone had barely gone into service in the mid-1990s when the Special Operations Command rejected them as being too big for commando missions, and the regular surface navy dismissed them as being too small for any of its missions. The navy began to look for ways to phase out the Cyclone and her sister ships, so on the 28th of February 2000, Cyclone was decommissioned and stricken from the navy list. The Coast Guard lacked an effective vessel between its 110-foot patrol cutter and the 210-foot medium endurance cutter, so there was considerable interest in the Cyclone at first. However, her high operating costs were prohibitive and thus she sat largely inactive. USS Cyclone PC-1 was eventually sold under the Foreign Military Sales Program to the Philippine Navy on the 8th of March 2004 as part of a US military aid package in an effort to bolster interdiction and counter-terrorism capabilities. She was rechristened BRP Mariano Alvarez. My name is Grimmy and I've come to reap your immortal soul. In War Thunder, USS Cyclone is in her original fit-out, 
which was armed with two Mark 38 25mm chain guns fore and aft, as well as pintle mounts for attaching 50 caliber machine guns. The Cyclone along with others of her class were upgraded early on by replacing the aft Mark 38 mount with a new Mark 96 platform. The Mark 96 combines both a 25mm chain gun and a 40mm grenade launcher on a single stabilized platform. I was really hoping she'd be fitted with the Mark 96 as it features an electro-optical fire control system with 27 times zoom, infrared and low light modes, a laser rangefinder and an array of environmental sensors, which fed data into a ballistics computer to produce an accurate firing solution even while maneuvering at high speed. The computer could also interface with the Stinger SAMs carried on board which are not present in the game. The Navy was positive about the performance of the Mark 96 and briefly considered upgunning the 25mm Bushmaster cannon to a 30mm or even 35mm cannon, but due to the high price this never came to pass. The Cyclones found their true calling when the US invaded Iraq and the majority of the boats were relocated to Bahrain to serve as interdictors and to defend the precious crude terminals located in the Persian Gulf. In an attempt to increase their anti-ship firepower against the fast attack craft of the Iranian Navy, in 2013 the ships were fitted with two quad Griffin missile launchers. The Griffin is comparable to a Hellfire missile with similar range and slightly smaller warhead. In terms of survivability the Cyclone is fairly hardy with 16mm of steel in the hull, well spaced compartments and crew. Although the 25mm Bushmaster is an excellent weapon for its calibre, coming with two shells, a high explosive shell with a decent amount of TNT filler and an armor piercing discarding Sabo round with high velocity and penetration characteristics. A small issue arises when using the stock belts, this belt has a 50-50 ratio of HE to APDS and due to their difference in velocity it's almost impossible to score hits with both types at range. This was initially a huge handicap and as a result I researched ammunition before I researched the repair and fire control kits. In fact, the ammunition types are so vastly different that players will need to regularly change between ammunition types to maximize their firepower. The APDS has a range of up to 4km, excellent penetration but very poor post penetration damage. This round is super accurate so it's useful for sniping critical modules or exposed torpedo tubes, though don't expect to do much to large warships. The HE round acts more like a small frag grenade with much more pronounced arc of fire a shorter range at 2.5 kilometers. In comparison this round is very inaccurate and needs significantly more lead than the APDS round. I suggest using this round when facing light boats at close range or when you need to fire over hard cover. So now that the history and review is done and we know its strengths and weaknesses, I'll leave you with some live gameplay to show you how I think that this ship should be used. So here we are, USS Cyclone on Coral Islands. It looks like I am the only coastal boat. She's not spaded. I've only unlocked the different types of shells and their repair and fire kits. But I feel like she peaks in power pretty, pretty early. Once you get those early modules, there's not much more that the ship can offer. Besides being a little bit faster and a better handling. So because there's a lot of hard cover, I'm going to use the high explosive shells so I can shoot over the cover. The APDS shells are have a very flat trajectory. Got a nice hit here on the PR183. Rear turret is now out of sight. These shells do have a bit of floatiness to them though, so they are hard to get on target. Especially if you can't see the target. But now that we have, we'll lay some across his bow. Slowly chipping away. There we go. So we'll back up. Looks like we've got some German tracer fire. Possibly a destroyer, maybe. Another project. 183. Possibly the same guy with a backup. See, at two and a, three kilometers, they just the high explosive shells can't reach that far. 2.5 k's is the max effective range. Although they will do nothing to these. Looks like a pair of minesweepers, German minesweepers, the M802. 
set a fire there. Throw some more shells down range. We're not going to get through their hull. They are thick. I like to use this gun in five round bursts. It keeps the heat under good management. Getting hits, but we've already damaged everything that we can see. So we're not getting any points there. Alright, time to back her up. Now we want to try and stay out of the range of those 37 millimeters. At about two and a half kilometers, they won't do too much damage to us. Our main vulnerability is the crew on the guns. Very susceptible to high explosive fire. We've got a T-14 trying to sneaky cap. And because we're running against him, we need a lot of lead. And in the bouncy swell, it is actually quite hard to hit with it. That Project 183 is coming in too. Try and get some on him again. He's coming at that same angle we got him last time. Got his front turret. But looks like they're going to make that cap. I still don't have any teammates, which is making it difficult. They all appear to be in destroyers. So with all of that enemy movement, I'm not going to push the B cap. I think I might turn around. And then we'll make a run for the alpha point. Got a landmass up ahead, so we'll kill the engine. Hit full reverse. Slow down to underneath our uh, maximum turn speed. Or our sustained turn speed. And that will drastically shorten our turning circle. And we hit full flank ahead once we get past that island mass. Rear gun can see this T-14. We'll try and get some shots through the rocks. One hit, but no substantial damage. No doubt he's making a run for that other point that remains uncaptured. Teammate has managed to decap this Charlie point. But those M802s are now into the Bravo area and they're getting very close, so I'm not gonna stick around. I'm gonna make a run for the Alpha. We're substantially faster than them and I don't wanna get too close. Sneaky rock man, take some shots. Make him think twice about ambushing. Although he's too close to get any more shots on him. So at this stage of the battle, we are at a disadvantage. We are losing tickets fairly quickly. I'm pretty confident we can turn this around if I can make it to the alpha point and lock down and kill all these coastals. But I do need to be in the open water for that. Yeah, just as I suspected, he's making his run. Yeah, I don't particularly like the high explosive shells. Oh, we're being ambushed. What's this? VS-10. It's taken out our front gunner. Turn towards the cover to shorten it. Turn away. Is he going to follow us? He's substantially faster. Oh, he decides to go around. So that gives me time to repair the guns. We'll try and take out his friend here. No. Not enough time, so we'll switch our magazines, get the guns loaded. One second remaining. APDS rounds are ready. And one down. Getting some shots right through the bow. It's not particularly damaging the APDS round, but it is highly accurate, and if it gets through it and hits a crew member, he's toast. So small boats with small crews just get annihilated. If you know where to shoot, you can take things down fairly quickly. Although anything larger with well-spaced crew, very difficult to take down and you're more of an annoyance to them. So I'm, I'm pretty hopeless against these M82s in this boat. I can only really take out their turrets and their bridge. Can't get through that thick hull and the coal bunkers that protect them. But we can kill something like a Mutsuke. I'll show you a little trick if we can get this to work. 
they have torpedo reloads just at the first stack. So if you can get some 40 millimeter bow fours or some high velocity 25 millimeters through here, this spot right there, usually this works. Let's see if we, there you go. <laughs> Those long lances are very deadly to carry, so stay away. Here's Mr. T-14, we'll put some through the entirety of his boat. Toast. Turn in to avoid that torpedo he just dropped. Yeah, so these guns are very good if you know exactly where to shoot on a large ship or if the ship has a vulnerability of some description like those Japanese ships. But if they're a well-defended ship or they have well-placed crew, there's not a lot you can do to them. So to kill these guys, I'll have to drive up real close and punch right through their hull and take advantage of the huge penetration at close range that these APDS rounds have. At between three and four kilometers, they act more like a 50 caliber round. So it only really has a benefit of extended range. Close range though, they cut right through boats like butter. Those two crossing each other's lines there, so we can manage to get hits on both of them, but we're not being very effective. Fortunately, our destroyers have pushed through the Charlie Point, but they're probably bots, since they didn't capture it. Okay, so we're going to have the Alpha Point on lockdown now, which means we will stabilize our ticket bleed, at the very least. And we'll start chipping away at this Clemson's health. One thing about these shells is they're almost invisible when you're getting shot by them. You don't realize. I've died a few times to Cyclone shells and not realized I was being shot. You can barely see those traces. Managed to get through to the boiler room and start a fire. Keep chipping away at the crew modules. Rear gun is on the reload. Other guns on the reload now too. 10 second reload, so you have to be very aware of that. Don't get caught changing shells under pressure. Okay, so we've taken the Charlie point now and we have the advantage. But what am I going to do about these M802s? Managed to get a torpedo hit, but those G7 torpedoes aren't as volatile as the Japanese ones. So I'll keep chipping away at Clemo. Down to 29 crew. 29% crew, I should say. Get some rear hits on this M802, take out some more turrets. Just be a general annoyance. This guy's a bit closer, so we might be able to punch through his hull. And we didn't even get the kill or an assist because we didn't do much damage after all that. Let's try and redeem ourselves and finish off this Clemson. We do it at a nice close range, so we're punching right into him now. Done. I guess we need to make our way back to Bravo now. So there's a perfect example of an enemy you don't want to fight because you'll just get locked down the whole battle. Oh. Always check for enemies on the starboard side. But that works out okay because now we will just use another backup 
and we will rush into the Bravo point. Coast is clear. Doesn't seem to be any small boats at the moment. These useless minesweepers. If they were actually playing, they would have wiped the floor with me. Okay. Looks like all the hard work is actually done. But we will try and get one of these dudes. You do have an air search radar, but the boat does not have an air track radar. So don't expect any help when you're using it for AA. Also, the guns themselves, while the shells are pretty good if they hit the aircraft, it is pretty hard to lead because there isn't any fire control directors on the boat. Because uh, in real life, they had stingers. Which would have been limited use against, I guess, most aircraft of the day but they were designed during a time of relative stability in the world. And so the US Navy wasn't really expecting any aerial threats. Having air and sea dominance for the better part of 30 years. So the Bravo point is now being captured. For all intents and purposes, I think our mission here is complete. We'll probably win this easily. Try and avenge our ally there, losing a wing. See, if we had the Mark 96 turret on the front, or the rear, or anywhere on the boat, we could get close and just punch him full of 40mm grenades. Also, probably something I didn't mention in my review was that the standard boat had 40mm grenade launchers as well. The pintle mounts on the boat were suitable for both and the weapons locker had them on board. Also, there was a mount on the rear, if I'm not mistaken. Later iterations of the Cyclone class had a different method for recovering the Special Forces operations boat, although I can't remember the name of the system. It is worth looking up. It allowed them to recover the boat within two minutes, I believe. Designed for rapid infiltrations and exfiltrations, it would have been an exciting boat to serve on. It's a shame that the Special Forces Operations Group decided that it was too large for their use. But I'm sure there's some times when it was used for those methods. Well, that's pretty much the game over. It's a relatively stress-free game, but decent rewards with some extra backups, even one for the USS Arizona. We made 13,000 RP with a 100% booster, and we managed to finish Armageddon 